Have you ever wanted to use animations from Hollow Knight but couldn't figure out how? Well, this was me up until a few months ago, and no matter what I googled, I couldn't seem to find a clear answer. But now that I do know, I thought I'd do a little tutorial to help out others who were in my situation. And don't worry, it's actually really easy once you know how. To start out, you'll need three things. A copy of Hollow Knight installed on Steam, some kind of video editing software, I'll be using DaVinci Resolve, which you can get for free, and a program called Super Sprite Extractor Advanced. First things first, you'll need to go and download Super Sprite Extractor Advanced from GitHub. I'll leave the link in the description so you can download it below. This program converts sprite sheets into actual usable animations. It was only designed for Hollow Knight in mind, so just a heads up, it probably won't work on any other games. Once you have that downloaded, unzip and install the program, then open it up. From here we want to go to the top left and hit the open button, then click all files, then pick folder. And now we need to point the program to the Hollow Knight data folder. For me it was in program files, steam, steam apps, common, and then Hollow Knight. Click on the Hollow Knight data file and hit open, and then hit open once again. I'd recommend pinning the Steam common folder to the quick access to make life a bit easier if you need to repeat this process. Once you hit open, a pop-up will appear saying this may take a while and to be patient. Hit OK and wait for the program to load. For me it takes around 30 to 45 seconds or so. Once the list on the left is populated, we can choose a collection and decide on what animation we want to extract. Let's scroll down a bit and find our mate Quirrell. Once we click on him, we'll see a list on the right of all these animations, and in the middle, each frame that makes up that animation. We can also hit play to see what the animation looks like. Another thing we want to take note of, once we've decided on an animation, is the FPS, which can be found at the bottom right of the screen. Make a mental note of this for later, as we'll need it in order to make the animation look as they do in game. With the animation we want still selected, we want to hit save, this, animation. From here I suggest creating a folder with the animation name, and I also like to include the FPS the animation is played at. Once you've done that, another box will pop up. The main thing we need to do here is uncheck enable red borders, otherwise each frame will have an ugly red outline around it and be useless. Once this is done, hit export. Now's the part where we need to open up the editing software. Again, I'm using DaVinci Resolve Studio, and the free version of this will work just fine. Open up a new project and drag in all frames of your animation. It's important to drag them all at once and make sure the names of them are not altered, as we want them to be recognised as a PNG sequence, which will save us a bit of work of manually putting them together in the timeline. Now sometimes they'll all import as individual files. To fix this in DaVinci, go to the Media tab, click these three dots, hit Display Mode, and then click Sequence. Now when we drag and drop all the frames, so long as they're numbered, it will automatically create a PNG sequence. Now if we drag and drop this into the timeline and hit play, it should play all the frames in order. Now yeah, we could use this as is, however I personally don't like having everything be a PNG sequence, as it's a lot of extra steps if you're reusing an animation over and over in different projects. Not to mention the frame rate is probably not accurate. So from here we're going to hit export, and I've made a custom export setting just for this. You can use many options, but I've personally gone with QuickTime as the format, but the most important thing here is to make sure the export alpha box is checked, otherwise everything will have a solid black background, which will be useless. Once you've selected your save location, call your animation whatever you want, but importantly, add the animation's frame rate at the end, so we'll know for later. This is very important if you want it to look accurate to the game. In this case, going back, this animation played at 12 FPS, so I'll title it 12 FPS at the end. Now hit export, and we're mostly done. Now let's pretend we're going to use it. All we have to do is open a new project. Let's throw in a quick background, load in our animation, and throw it in the timeline. Now you might notice the animation playing a little fast or a little slow. To fix this, we just need to right click it, click change speed, and change the FPS to whatever the animation was, in this case 12. And now you see why I like to add the FPS at the name of the file when exporting. Once that's done, drag it to its proper length as lowering FPS will make the animation longer, but won't reflect that until you've manually changed it. This animation is a perfect loop, so if we want it to last longer, all we need to do is copy and paste it a few times, and then I like to right click and create a compound clip and resize it at the very end. Now, this might not be the most optimal method, however, I've used it on two videos now, and this has worked best for me. One more thing to note here is some animations are broken up into a heap of smaller sets. For example, the Crystal Dash animation is made up of loads of separate pieces. 
both for the night and the effects. So if you do want it to be a perfect recreation, you'll have to stitch it together in the editor. If you're ever confused about how an animation should look, I recommend going in-game with the recording software and getting a small bit of footage for reference. The only other tip I have is pay close attention to the animations in Super Sprite Extractor. Sometimes something that loops will actually have a few transitional frames that don't loop at the very start. If this is the case, you'll just have to shave them off in the editor or make them a separate animation without the transitional frames or your animation might come out looking a bit funny and not loop properly. And that's about all guys, I hope this helped anyone looking to do some fun things with Hollow Knight animations. If you get stuck or have any questions, comment below and I'll do my best to try help out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.